This is absolutely unbelievable, folks, and uh, maybe you've already heard about this so far today, uh, but the revisions on the Bureau of Labor Statistics is just, it just shows how desperately lost we are as a country, how absolutely fraudulent everything coming out of Washington, D.C. is, and uh, it, everyone can see it. Anyone who looks can see how fraudulent, how full of lies everything coming out of D.C. is. And I'm going to show you. People, people told, uh, people were telling about how off this estimate was back in March. Uh, numerous different uh, people, journalists, even the Federal Reserve knew that the numbers coming out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics was absolutely fraudulent. Everybody knew the right number, except for the federal government employees paid with millions and millions of dollars by the United States taxpayers. They had to twist things intentionally in order to make uh, the current administration look better, to make the current economy look better than it actually is. We're gonna jump into it, folks. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a rant, sorry, but uh, not sorry. Uh, they have all of this coming to them because this is not incompetence. This is outright fraud. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar, I'm an accountant by trade. And uh, we're covering the things that the mainstream media just is absolutely refusing to cover. We've been saying it all year long, I've been telling you, all year long, that the fake job numbers coming out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics is absolutely fraudulent. I've been telling you about other frauds that they were playing. I'm telling you that the oil reserves, the, the, the information coming out of the United States Energy Agency is absolutely fraudulent too. They're trying to manipulate the price of oil down. And so they're pretending like there's more oil, there's more diesel, more gasoline, and they're just publishing lies. And it is absolutely third world banana republic kind of stuff. Just like the Soviet Union lied about all their production constantly, the United States is lying about the state of the United States economy now. Welcome to what it feels like to live in a banana republic. All right, so what exactly happened? The Bureau of Labor Statistics overstated the jobs for last year by 818,000. You could round it up to 1 million. They're off by 1 million. Now, just so you can kind of put this in perspective, because, you know, I mean... If we're talking about hundreds of millions, I mean, off by a million can be, you know, one, one, two percent, something like that. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. I mean, one, two percent. I mean, it's a big number, but I mean, it's understandable. They were off by 30 percent. We pay $712 million per year to get these numbers that are off by 30% and always in the politically expedient direction. Whatever is politically expedient to them, that's the direction it always seems to be off by. They conjured up one million fake jobs. Uh, we've, we've heard the phrase, the Biden crime family or the crime syndicate. And that's basically what we're talking about here. The numbers that are coming out of Washington, D.C., this, this is just the latest example, are completely fraudulent. Now, how do I know that's fraudulent? Well, back in March, when they released their, their <coughs> initial... The, they're revising the March numbers, okay? For 2023. When it came out, the U.S. Federal Reserve, which doesn't receive a dime of taxpayer dollars. Now, they, they, they steal so much money. It's unbelievable, okay? They steal so much money. But they're not on the government payroll, right? They almost immediately came out and said, ah, it's overstated by 800,000 
jobs. Here we are <laughs> in August, five months later, and uh, the Federal Reserve knew back in March what the Bureau of Labor Statistics is just now realizing. You see how that could be construed as, uh, I don't know, fraud, intentional fraud. Did anyone at the Bureau of Labor Statistics say, you know what, we could just like, we all can just take the year off. We can pick up the phone and call the Federal Reserve and say, hey, how many jobs were created? Because you know what? We could have saved ourselves uh, $712 million dollars and have one person from the White House pick up the phone, call the Federal Reserve, and get their number. And we would be way closer. Right now, we have a $712 million agency per year that could be functionally replaced by a monkey with a dartboard. And we'd probably be more accurate. The fact that they're off by 30%, the second largest... <clears throat> adjustment in, in U.S. history and just, oh, it just happens to be in an election year. Just happens to be that way. Just happens to be the thing that they were talking about the most. And believe me, friends, they knew this was coming. Notice how Harris hasn't been out there talking about jobs recently. She knew this revision was coming because her buddies who received $712 million to make up fake numbers told her, oh, by the way, the adjustment's coming. And when it does, you don't want to look like a fool, so let the old guy take the heat for this one. He used it to shape public opinion for... Well over a year, but uh, yeah, that one's about to expire, so better not do that. And why are they even revising now? Like, why don't they just keep lying? Some people would ask that question. Why don't they just keep lying? Well, see, because they want the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates here in September. And to do that, they need to see that the economy is not doing so well. Now, the Federal Reserve already knew back in March how off these numbers were. And supposedly the Federal Reserve will go off of their numbers, which are far more accurate than the United States government's numbers. Isn't that just wonderful? Um, yeah, we're paying buku bucks to get fake numbers that are spun politically. How do they do this? And we've talked about... Uh, how even that number that we're getting out of them is, uh, is absolutely bonkers stupid. We talk about how full-time jobs in the United States in the last two years have actually declined. We have less full-time jobs, less people with full-time jobs today than we did two years ago. Think about that. And if that doesn't hurt your brain... Especially given this whole, look how great the economy is, propaganda that's been shoved down our throats. Less people have a full-time job today than two years ago. So, well, where did all these jobs come from? Simple. Companies have been cutting full-time jobs, turning them into two or three part-time jobs, and rehiring. Steve, that, that sounds kind of scandalous. Yeah, yeah, doesn't it? With increased requirements for health insurance and increased requirements of this and that, it's cheaper for companies because of what the federal government has done to take full-time jobs and turn them into two or three or more part-time jobs. Well, at least Americans are working. At least Americans are working. Well, that's not true either. There are less... American citizens with a job today than two years ago. Any job, part-time or full-time. We have less, Ameri less Americans with jobs 
Of those Americans that have jobs, many of them have lost their full-time job and are now having to work two or three part-time jobs to even try to make ends meet. Do you see how everything is a lie? Is this a good economy? No, it's not. All the statistics out there, if you just read them, show a glimpse of how bad things are. And even that is spun by an extra 818,000. That's about the roughly the population here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The whole city. They just kind of made up a whole city worth of jobs. But of course, not everybody in Pittsburgh's working. 800, one mil, how can you be off by one million? That's, that, that takes some work. Off by 30%. That's why I'm saying it's fraud. It's not, not unintentional, not oopsies. The last time they made, I said the second worst in history. You know when the first biggest adjustment happened? the 2008 crisis. Basically, they, they put out their numbers for 2008 before the whole crash happened and things just went sideways and threw all their models out the window because it was so many people were being laid off that by the end of the year, they, they were trying to catch up and, and crunch the numbers. And so they needed to make a sizable revision. The fact that this revision in this great economy is comparable to the revision that happened because of the end of the year stock market crash, absolute financial Armageddon of 2008. The fact that this revision is comparable to that one should tell you all you really need to know about the true state of the U.S. economy. But do I need to tell you about the true state of the U.S. economy? Or have you been to the grocery store recently? Have you looked at your paycheck and then looked at the grocery store prices? Obviously you have. Or your significant other has, right? Um, someone in your household has looked at one of those numbers and someone in your household has looked at the other number, right? And for a lot of you, you've seen both of them. And when you compare those two, when you know how many of your friends have lost jobs, all of us, all of us know people who are looking for work but can't find it. And I don't know about you, but these are not incompetent people, right? Do you know competent people who are looking for work that haven't been able to find something remotely comparable to what they had and what they lost. I think we're all there, aren't we? If, if you have a really small circle, maybe you don't know somebody. A whole bunch of you guys are there where you're like, I know how to do stuff, I'm willing to work, and yet I can't find a suitable job. Yeah, you can go down to McDonald's or Wendy's and, and flip burgers, and, and there is no honor lost in doing that to make ends meet, right? Um, to refuse to work, there's honor lost there, that's for sure. To refuse to work when you're able to work, um, that, that's, that's not cool. We have a nation of people getting handouts who refuse to work. We have people coming from other places who are refusing to work and are living on the dole. How many thousands of dollars do you get paid to come across the line there to come into the U.S. to receive, as we're just seeing in California, they want to give, they want to give zero down mortgage loans to people who are from other places. Not to U.S. citizens. No, no, no. This is going to be explicitly for other people, not us. Not us citizens, not U.S. veterans who are homeless, 
not people who have a job, but rather people coming from other places. California is going to subsidize their mortgages, guarantee their mortgages so that they can get mortgages and buy homes here. People who should not be here. That's where we are. Uh, how, how does this whole thing keep going? I've told you how the U.S. economy works. 10% of the U.S. GDP is deficit spending by the federal government. Another 2 or 3% is probably deficit spending by states and local governments. When we start talking about roughly 12 to 13 or so percent of the U.S. economy is literally just us printing money. That should tell you something. And, and, and that really bodes for even more than that. Uh, let's say I conjure up $100,000. And so I go to the store and I go buy some stuff. Well, I've just helped a whole bunch of businesses, haven't I? It's not that I just spent money, but these businesses have now made money that they're going to pay employees with. They're going to buy more inventory. I bought things, and they're going to uh, pass that money along to, to order more things from factories. And those factories are going to make more orders out there. When, this is what they talk, call velocity of money. So if I inject several trillion dollars, like the federal government is, into the economy, that doesn't result in several trillion dollars worth of GDP increase. What it does is it actually turns into 10, 15 trillion dollars worth of GDP increase of that money flowing around. So when you start looking at things truthfully, you can see that about roughly, and this is just me spitballing here, but just to give you an idea, 50% of the U.S. economy is just fake money that we're printing. Well, Steve, it's fake money, then, then how does that even work? Because there are billions of suckers around the world who are still buying U.S. dollars. Billions of suckers. The federal government is just basically stealing that wealth, using the U.S. dollar as a vehicle of theft, to fund the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy is like a pirate ship. There aren't really jobs and stuff like that that aren't funded. You know, you're like, well, I'm just a cook. I don't actually steal stuff from anybody. So yeah, well, well how do you get paid? Oh, well, you know, people appreciate my food. It's like, yes, but where do they get the money to pay you as the cook? They steal it from someone else. A lot of us are cooks, okay, on a pirate ship. And they're just stealing money from people around the world. And we're reaping the benefit of it. At what point is the rest of the world going to get wise to this scam and say no more? Well, the BRICS countries are wise to the scam and they're saying no more. China is getting wise to it. Europe is starting to get wise to it. Other countries are starting to stop buying U.S. Treasury bills. U.S. savings bonds. Basically loaning the federal government money. Which makes this whole scam work. They realize that they're being fleeced and stolen from. And that's the only thing keeping the U.S. economy going. And if you think that's going to continue forever, <laughs> you got another thing coming. When people start having a legitimate alternative to the U.S. dollar that steals from them, I promise you they're going to switch. They're going to switch so fast it's going to make our heads spin. And when they switch, this de-dollarization to gold, to the BRICS currencies, uh, to even alternative currencies like the Chinese uh, yuan, right? When, they sw when people switch from the U.S. dollar, we're going to implode like nobody's business. We're just waiting for that day, and it's going to be a process, and it's already started. Why do you think inflation exists? It's because other countries have finally said, heck no, no more. 
All right, friends, thanks for watching. If you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one right up here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.